I'm Jane Davenport and in this video I want to share with you some of my new stamps and dies and how I use them in some of my journals. <laughs> I pulled out this journal where I actually drew the original for this stamp and I, I love doing this in my journals as a designer going back to the original and placing the art tool that's been created from it right there with it so it sort of helps it tell this story it's just something that I personally take pleasure in so that's why we're going to start this video Whenever I get a new stamp, I just like to test it on some scrap paper. It always works better if it's actually flat, but it's more just to prime the stamp and any residue that might be there from the manufacturing process is stamped off basically. And then I can actually do a nice stamp with it. And I always do my test impression with black squid ink. I don't know why with the cave black, it's just the way it is. I'm going to use though one of my colored inks. This is a color called Suntan. There's four neutrals, I've got four brights at the moment, four neutrals, two metallics, a black and white. And I love the four neutrals. Uh, they can be used as a skin tone or various skin tones, but they can also um, just be a nice light impression so that you can draw over them. Now I am obviously stamping on a bit of a random page in a small art journal. And the reason I like creating on what I would call an art, oh, hello, back of head. Uh, the reason I like creating on a journal page that's got, it looks like pen tests from something, bits of leftover ink that I've splashed on the page. I've got a little bit of alcohol marker on the left there. It's a real hodgepodge. But I like it. So I want to use one of these Life Sparkle stamps. This is another one of my new stamp sets. And I'm just setting up my gold squid ink. I also just love the ink from this, just dabbing it with my finger and painting with it, quite frankly. So I feel like we need some gold stars in the sky here. <laughs> you can tell that I'm not the world's best stamper by any means, by the amount of time it takes me to work out where to even position the stamp on the stamp block. And sometimes I just do it with my hands. <laughs> but don't those little stars look so cute? And you can't see it when the page is static like this, but that beautiful squid ink is beautiful and metallic. I'm also wanting to add a little bit of the beluga white in the squid ink. I've got to just wipe off my um, stamp there, give it a little bit of a clean and pop a little bit of this white ink. It's not super, super opaque, but it's pretty opaque. And just to give it that beautiful, I don't know, like a, a confetti, a confetti of stars, not a constellation, a confetti as they rain down on whoever this is that has appeared in my journal. And one of the reasons I just love stamps is because they have got that little starting point or should I be more specific and say stamps in journals and part of the creative creative um, process is because it I think it does really open the mind up I find stencils stamps and the cutting plates or dies all work in that similar way that by adding ephemera um, it opens up a, a creative part of the mind that's different to drawing and I think all of it is good all of it's good for you so in <laughs> creating with this I decided she had to have a crown and then I thought mm, she really needs this crown which is one of my dies or cutting plates so I'm just thinking oh can I stamp with that the answer is not really so you heard that here first but you've got to try these things so let's use this <laughs> <laughs> the die cutting templates as they were intended I'm going to use some of my washi paper now this is rather than just being a strip of washi tape it's a whole sheet of 
washi paper or washi tape and I need to cut it in half and it is better Jane to go a ruler and do that yes hold it down and yes use it as a straight bar and now it's the perfect size for the cutter so we need to move move inks get our little deep sea die cutter set up put down the platform put down the bright pink cutting plate really can we be cuter and then uh, place all of the beautiful dies or cutting templates on the paper so I keep the paper with the good face up or the what I want showing upwards because uh, then I'll get a nicer cut and the way that it's finished will look better and I put the cutting templates so they're facing down so that when it goes through the machine that little cutting edge is going to do its job if you put something through a die cutter and it doesn't cut it just means probably your dies are upside down now I've got plenty of room on there I can fit in some other things so I'm going to fit as much as I can onto my paper and then when I've got all of my pieces assembled I put the second cutting plate on top just turn that little crank and I have lots of instant stickers on whatever paper I like so I call this a dry collage technique and because I don't need to use matte medium or glue or anything else to put these little separate pieces down. In the video, I'm using a scalpel to push out the pieces. Usually I use an awl and I just didn't have it in my studio. Once I've finished with my die cutting, I need to put my dies away. Really, this is just an excuse to show you how cute a little matching binder I have for my collection is. So I like to keep all my sets together. So I'm going to put all of the Tentalicious tentacles in one section. I'll have my Mum's the Word Chrysanthemum flower in one. I have my Queen for a day with the crown and all of the other little bits in another all of my Marsha's makeover dies another is that all five of them I think so oh and tousled I have to put her away as well I like to keep all all of the little bits just all nice and neat and tidy and just while we're on storage I then take a little bit of one of my washi tapes and just pop that down on the top of the opening there of each of the pockets just to help keep the dies or cutting templates in place and then if I'm moving my beautiful folder around like if I have friends coming over and we want to do some die cutting out on my big table I can move my binder and don't have to worry about anything falling out now I showed you all of that so that I can show you this <laughs> I wanted a turquoise crown and of course this is in washi tape which has that semi sheer look to it so I just that's why I knew I wanted to cut it out in exactly this material because it would look sheer I also knew that it wouldn't fit on the page that her little spines of the ground would be a little bit long but that didn't worry me at all I'm, I'm hoping I can maybe put some card on the other side so I can keep it so they do pop out of the top of the page and by adding more of these little um, pieces that I've just cut out and sticking them on I'm going to add another whole layer to the page I'm going to help make that crown settle in so it doesn't just look like a stuck on element I can have flowers in the background oh should I give her glasses <laughs> uh, I you know I can try ooh, you know what happens if I use the tentacles what happens if I use you know the magic wand what happens if I use a unicorn corn what happens if I add a little bit of that queen to the right hand side of the page now because this is quite an intricate uh, die cut I'm going to just rip it in half gently so that it'll be a little bit easier for me to apply as a sticker because look when I pull it out it's very fine um, this is what I love about working with spellbinders is we can do this level of quality and when I'm putting down something fine uh, all you need to do is just start at one end and then train um, or just follow the natural way that the uh, sticker wants to lay down because um, if I rush it too fast uh, it'll all get you know wrinkled up and whatever but 
that all went down perfectly. And because I have got it in two pieces, just makes it a little bit easier for me to apply. So a stamp can be the artwork itself, or it can just be the start of the artwork or a starting point. So I'm going to start adding some color and just see where this goes, because I don't know where I'm heading at this point. But I do know that I felt like using some of my palette pastels and I'm using one of the Batten blenders. So this is a collection that's all inspired by makeup. So it looks like an eyeshadow and it's as soft and velvety smooth as a beautiful eyeshadow. I can just layer up those colors. I am working on a very, very smooth piece of paper. And normally pastels on this type of paper, or like especially a chalk style um, pastel on this type of paper, yeah, not such a great idea, but because these are palette pastels, they're just a little bit different. <laughs> so I'm giving her some little pink rosy cheeks. I can do uh, add some warmth to the skin. I can add shadows and contouring to the skin. I've got all of those uh, different skin tones that I could use. So they're very, very uh, versatile. That is what I find. And you can see that the palette pastels do have a little bit of opacity. So they've hidden some of those details. Now this is a perfect opportunity to make what was a stamped impression, more of my own. So I know round about where the eyes are because I can still see them and I can add uh, different details. I can make the eyes look in a different direction. I can make them a different shape so that even though I have this same stamp repeated throughout this journal, uh, each page is going to look a little different. So it just becomes a very creative tool. And I've just used some of the Black Lace Ultimate Pen on the eyes and some of the Storytime Paint Pen in Mad Hatter to add some little details. I really don't like the <laughs> stalks, those little random green pen lines. So I'm just adding little bits and pieces, a little bit of line work just to help them settle in the page so they're not they don't just stand out like a sore thumb anymore. So I suppose you could think of that as just adding more sore thumbs <laughs> around it. Uh, sometimes when I draw something like I just did that weird little flower, uh, that felt like another sore thumb that I was adding. But all of these things, they, they seem like they stand out at the time. And you could think, ooh, I just ruined the page. But you haven't, you've just, it's this joy, joy, destroy mentality. And as long as there's more joy than destroy, everything's good. But you, you're constantly um, working with that artwork and going through a process of uh, experimentation and pushing it a little bit more and seeing where things are going to take you. Uh, I'm lifting up the eyebrows now just to change them from what is underneath the like what is the stamped impression and uh, giving her a more hmm, quizzical whimsical look I'm also adding a little bit of the drama stick in various colors to define her features I also find that with a smaller face like this this is a fairly small journal and this is a stamped face it's a fairly small image the simpler I keep things the better they look so I can live in that freedom <laughs> <laughs> of giving her just literally a little red dot for a mouth and picking out some highlighted uh, areas on her face with my Snow White Fine paint pen, one of the Storytime paint pens. Just some white in the eyes, a little bit of white highlight in the pupil and a little bit on the nose, on the cheekbones, on the lips. And I'm, again, I want to just change the stamped image in the background and create something a little bit different. So I'm creating a shorter, fuller little bobbed hairdo. And to add a little bit more detail to the lips, I'm using a Made in the Suede, which is a beautiful sepia colored waterproof ink in the ultimate pen. Also adding some more details to the eyes, redefining the chin. Now, the wonderful thing about this pen is that it will work on top of just about everything, including the palette pastels. If you had just a normal old pen, 
uh, yeah, you need to be a little bit more careful of using them over something like a pastel because it could potentially clog your pen up. But you don't have to worry about these because these are a brush pen and they are made for this. They, they love a bit of uh, mixed media and a bit of layering. Now that we're on a bit of a roll, let's add a bit more contouring again with that Batten Blender. And I'm just adding a darker color to the deeper parts of the face. So around the eye sockets, under the cheekbones, maybe under the chin. And then I'm going to use my Batten Blender just to push it into the page, basically just blend it in uh, so that it bonds with the paper and just becomes part of the page rather than pastel just sitting up on top of the paper. And to get her feeling so she's not just floating as a shoulder to head uh, half a torso floating on the page, I've got uh, just some little wiggly lines to say gown. She's just an ethereal princess floating through her garden of flowers and stars making life sparkle or maybe she's looking at someone who makes her life sparkle oh yes i think we need to add someone else to the page we need the sparkler this is another one of my new sets of stamps it's called mix and match and it's got three faces and a base it looks almost like a thumbprint but it's a base one as well you can use for different skin tones which is just a big spot whatever you like to use it for they're your stamps <laughs> So I'm adding my uh, squid ink over the top and of course because I've got layers and different bits and pieces happening I didn't get a perfect impression but it's good enough because it just gives me another little chance to make this my own. I'm using one of my waterproof finishing pens just to add those little details in. Of course if I was clever I could do what I did on the other side, line it back up and uh, try and get that last little bit that I'd missed but it doesn't really matter. I actually think it adds to everything and again I don't want just a floating head on the page I want to ground it with just a simple body shape so neck goes into shoulders that flare out and a little bit of a neckline and that's all we really need to know about because I have a queen on the other side I think I need we need another form of crown on this girl as well and so I'm just having fun giving her a little bit of a smile, uh, giving her a few more freckles, just making the stamped image my own. And because I've got these random pen marks on this page, I kind of want to disguise those or try and get it to talk to the other side of the page, which I am quite liking. So I've got an ultimate pen in Thriller Jacket. This is a waterproof ink and it has a semi opacity to it. It's really beautiful ink. I think she needs a little bit of uh, blush on. I think this is me just procrastinating while I'm deciding what to do. Like, do I need to get rid of that hello that's there? Do I need to get rid of the heart that's on its side and those random strokes? How do I assimilate these other random marks into what I've got happening on the page? Just adding lines over things that I want to send back into the background. So I've just used Snow White where it says hello, which I don't really you know, think is a big part of the page. It doesn't have to totally disappear though. So just by putting the white over it, I'm saying, yeah, you're still welcome. But if you could just take a step back, uh, that would be really appreciated. And because I've got lots of other stamp sets that are right in front of me, I saw the feathers. This is from the Floating Feathers stamp set, which matches the die cutting set. And I'm going to put a little feather on there. So I've mentioned before, one of the reasons I love stamps is I can pre-visualize what things might look like. So that's why I'm putting this down on the page, working out Oh, what, what would that look like there? Which size feather is going to work? And now I'm mixing my colors just straight onto the stamp itself. I've got two of my squid inks there. And uh, just so I get an ombre effect. And as with my normal process for art journals, I am just taking things as they are revealed gradually. So now I'm using my uh, Storytime paint pen in Snow White. Look how her bag it is. Oh. Uh, just to take some of those lines away and as I said before not to make them disappear completely because I do love to see where the page came from but 
I don't necessarily need the extraneous lines. They, you know, make the what I'm trying to say on the page or what the page is trying to say. Uh, it just is uh, strangling it a little. So by taking away some of those lines, I can help it along. Now I want to get the two backgrounds uh, on the pages trying to talk to each other a little better. Well, that's what I'm I'm feeling. There's no formula to anything. I'm just talking through my process really. So I'm going to mix up a little uh, bit of purple wash from my watercolor set. And in my watercolor set, the one they have uh, in this video, I've taken out the tray that is in there initially I've added magnets to the bottom of all of my water pan, <laughs> my pan watercolors and I've managed to squeeze in another row of uh, colors and so I've got some of my favorite Daniel Smith colors there as well and I'm just mixing a few of the purple to make purple I have a lot of purple watercolors uh, because I find it such a great color for shadows and for deepening other colors without deadening them. So, oh, yum. Now I'm adding a little bit of quin coral, or quinacridone coral, and a little bit of fairy tale from my bright palette of watercolors. So always remember with watercolors, you can mix them all together. <laughs> you don't have to have just one brand and stay loyal to that. Uh, you can mix all of your different brands and create uh, your own collection. So just with a few little swipes of watercolor, I feel like those two sides of the pages are talking to each other a little better. And now I'm adding uh, some little final details with my LTQ or License to Quilt pen, uh, which is a waterproof, really, really black ink and a really beautiful fine brush tip in that. Uh, bringing some extra lines um, above and beyond the stamped image to help it settle into the page and just to make it unique to this page that I have stamped the image on. I absolutely love art journaling, I love designing art supplies and I love seeing how other people use them. I have a Jane Davenport Mixed Media group on Facebook where people from all over the world share the beautiful artwork that they are creating with their Jane Davenport Mixed Media, Artmology and Making Faces and whatever else they come up with in the future. I hope to see you there.